welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. Today we're going to be restoring this folding bike. Now this folding bike has a little bit of a sentimental history for me. My wife and I bought a pair of these in 2003 in preparation for one of our trips to Japan. And these are folding bikes. They fold up and you can fit them into a bag and take them on an airplane and stuff. So we took a pair of these to Japan and then used them to ride all over the country. And uh, it's just a fun little bike we got off the internet, you know, 15 years ago. And it is so beat up. We're going to restore this thing and uh, just really make it look awesome and try to bring it back. So uh, does that sound like a fun project, Tom? Yeah. All right, guys, let's survey the damage a little bit. First, you can see the seat is garbage here. It's uh, all mildewy and nasty and torn. Um, the whole steering stem is just solid rust the gear shift got some problems bells all rusty the uh, both tires are completely flat uh, this is the the hinge in the main frame that allows it to fold into two pieces and that is that is stuck I got more rust lots of rust Kickstand and the rear brakes all rusty. Pedals, pedals are rusted up. Sprockets got some serious, serious rust right there. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Oh, it is so rusty, but there, we got it to fold. Listen, I got a can of WD-40 and a bunch of hammers and wrenches and stuff, and. We're gonna see if we can't get this thing busted down to all of its parts so we can start cleaning it. a bit of work and a lot of WD-40 but we got most of the stuff off. One of these uh, pedals just will not budge and uh, the stem to the handlebars is rusted on really good. So I'm going to put this in the vise and try to get the handlebar stem out and uh, I'll think of something with the rest of it. Oh, it's working. There we go. Oh, look at the cobwebs on that. All right, this is not the tool for getting this part off, but it is the tool I have. This is ball bearings, gotta take care of that. All right. There's the second ball bearing. Okay, I dropped the ball bearing casing on the ground, but luckily they're all present and accounted for and got the fork off. There we go. This is the locking mechanism that keeps the bike from unfolding, but uh, it won't quite latch right there. And I think that's because the rust is built up in the spring, preventing the spring from compressing all the way. We're gonna try. Oh, there we go. A little tippity tap. Yeah, we need to get rid of all of that rust right in there. Well, I've got the bike mostly broken down, but that's all the time I have for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and pick it up in just a little bit. It's another day and falls come with a bang, but we're gonna keep working on the bike project. And I've got my little boy Jacob with me. He's rocking his car hearts. <laughs> I've got the bike broken down to all the parts I wanna save and I need to refurbish them by getting the rust off. The, the smaller stuff I can soak in a bucket of a vapor rust and the bigger stuff, which won't fit into the bucket, I am gonna I'm gonna coat with a layer of navel jelly to get the rust off. There, that kind of fits. Yeah. 
This product I'm using is called a Vapor Rust, and I've used this before for other projects. I really like it. It's non-toxic, but you have to submerge the rusty item in the Vapor Rust. And it's reusable, but um, you need a lot of it to submerge it. And some of these things, like the bike rims, I'll have to, to rotate and flip because I can't get it all under, under the Vapor Rust at the same time. We'll see how that goes. We're going to paint some of this navel jelly onto the rusty spots here and see if that helps. It is pink. Like I brush it? Yeah, you brush it on. Well, it's been about four hours, and you can see here we've made a lot of progress, but you need to constantly keep reapplying the navel jelly. It kind of loses its kick after a little bit, and then you have to put some fresh stuff on. Um, so it's taken a lot longer than I thought, but working pretty well. Over here with the Vapor Rust, we're we're doing pretty well. We're making progress. It's a little bit slower though. But you can see like the that stem was just absolutely covered in rust and it's it's coming along pretty nicely. So we'll just let all this stuff keep soaking. I've been soaking that bicycle and reapplying navel jelly for about eight hours now. I've been shooting some other videos while I wait. And uh, we're losing our sunlight, so I am going to rinse it off and put it away. But uh, the stuff in the vapor rust can just sit there until I'm ready for it. it no harm in that. But the navel jelly, you don't you don't want to leave it on for too long. It gets uh, hardens uh, and will leave a little pink residue on everything. Well, guys, it's been a couple days, and this stuff has just been sitting in the vapor rust. So uh, let's see if we can't clean up these uh, bike rims and uh, maybe, just maybe, start painting. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Whoa, look at that. That is impressive. That was solid rust. Look how shiny that is. Oh, that kickstand was just absolute garbage. Look at that. That looks so nice. Well, I've got a basket full of these uh, little washers and bolts and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and soak this in the vapor rust for a little while. Yeah. Just put that in there. Let that sit. I've got to get all the decals off. So I'm going to take this box cutter and see if I can't get these stickers off. Well, I've never used it before, but I got one of these Pour 15 painting kits. It's supposed to be really good for rusty stuff, painting over the top of rusty objects. Um, though I don't know if I need that. I've de-rusted it pretty well. But uh, got rubber gloves and paintbrush, got some cleanser, degreaser, some metal prep. Ooh, and that is a very tiny, tiny can of paint. I think that might be a problem. This tiny little cat food can is not going to cover all the parts I need. I just have a hard time believing that, especially since they want to do two layers. And this is telling me that if it's going to be exposed to direct sunlight, I need a top coat for UV protection, which I don't have. And it looks like I need some sort of spray bottle. So I think I'm going to get myself some more paint, a top coat, and a spray bottle. And we're going to deal with this. Uh, once I got all those things. Well fall has arrived and so has my new can of paint. So I got a bigger can of the paint and a big old can of the top coat. So we're ready to get going with this and so now I'm going to go and tape up the bike. Anything I don't want to be covered in paint I'm going to tape up and uh, we're going to get going. That took a lot of doing. I didn't take this part off because this was so rusted on, I was having a hard time getting that off. But I looked down here and this is coming out. This, uh, this uh, little Allen wrench nut is backing out. So I've got to get this off so I can tighten that up. So uh, I have to figure out a way. 
I could not get this thing off earlier and that navel jelly seems to have done the trick and uh, loosen that up thank goodness I've never actually removed this part of a bike and so I'm watching a YouTube video on how to do it because obviously there is something going on here I just can't get those crank arms off you're supposed to use an extractor tool and sometimes you can monkey it with a crowbar or screwdrivers but um, it's just not budging probably because of rust so I ordered uh, a $19 extractor tool on amazon.com and it should get here by tomorrow and I've also noticed that this this sprocket is really bent um, so we're gonna see if we can't uh, do something about that but I'll have to pick this up tomorrow because I need the tool. It's been a couple days and the tool came in the mail. So according to the instructions, I take this part and I thread that on all the way. So we got the nut threaded on and now we have to screw this thing in. And I think what happens is this pushes that nut in the middle out of the hole and then just prize it off. Oh, oh something just gave. Oh, is it coming off? Ho oh, ho! It came off! It worked! Oh that is that's dirty. You can see where all the banging from trying to do this without the puller tool just jacked up the uh the sprocket a little bit. So now I can get to this thing or jiggy and get it back in and fix that. Oh, that's looking pretty bad inside. Man, that is rusted up. I might want to dr drop that in the vapor rust. All right, Nathan, you ready for the next step? Yeah. I'm gonna hang it up just like that. Can you lift that up there? Yeah. All right, there you go, bud. Thanks for me. So this Core 15 kit says I'm supposed to spray on. Oh. So the Pour 15 kit says I'm supposed to put on this degreaser first, which I just dumped half of it on the ground, and then rinse everything with water and let it dry. And then I put on some metal prep spray and, and do the same thing. Watch out, buddy. You don't get these chemicals on you. Well, amazingly, I think I got everything coated with what was just left over in the bottle, but it's tearing up my hands. I think it's dissolving my skin, so I need to go wash my hands quick. All right, now I gotta hit it with the metal surface treating solution. And let that sit for 10, 15 minutes, and then I can rinse it off. Well, the bicycle frame is taking its dairy time to dry. I'm going through this bucket of parts that has been soaking in the vapor rust and just getting them all cleaned up. All right, time to paint this thing. I gotta admit, I'm a little bit nervous. There's moving parts that if I coat in paint, it will ruin them. So I've gotta be really careful and paint things carefully. It was about an hour painting all of this. It's really finicky stuff and I was trying not to make a mess of it because this stuff gets everywhere but I'm done and it looks amazing so um, I'm gonna let it dry overnight I'm gonna go to bed and we'll pick this up a little bit later well it's a cold wet fall day and I've got the heater on to try to put some warmth in this garage I've got two coats of paint on the bike but unfortunately, uh, because it's only been in the 40s and 50s the last few days, it, it's mostly dry. Um, it just still feels a little bit unset. So I'm gonna try to heat the garage up first and see if a couple hours of, of uh, 60s and 70 degree temperatures can't get the, the paint to set before I start assembling it. I mean, it's not perfect, but it doesn't look too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah, that one's looking good too. All right, check that out. 
That looks pretty slick. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. All right, there we go, one down. Here's the ball bearings that attach the, the fork for the front wheel to the stem. And we have cleaned those things up and we need to lube them up. All right, so when I painted the fork, I painted this part, which shouldn't be painted. And so I need to come in with a little X-Acto knife and clear away that paint, because that's interfering with the ball bearings. Well, this is killing my legs bending over, so I'm gonna move this up to my workbench, which I should have done a long time ago. Oh, whatever. There we go. Dang it, that ax just fell off the wall. Hit, knocked over my lamp, knocked over my basket full of nuts and bolts and just spread them all over the place. Well, I hope I found everything, but uh, I think the odds of that are low. So I got a new crank arm set uh, for this bike and uh, the other one was all bent up and squampus and they're pretty cheap. I got this on amazon.com for like 12 bucks or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. <laughs> this chain is supposed to be over there. Uh. I bought some replacement pedals because these ones um, are designed specifically for folding bikes. And they fold up like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I thought that would be a nice little improvement. I forgot to put that on. Oh, all right, take it off. Well, guys, I just spent an hour going to the hardware store trying to find a replacement nut for this eight millimeter bolt, okay? This is the nut that's lost somewhere in my garage. And it goes right there. And it's what keeps the handlebars in place. But the hardware store did not sell 8mm fine coarse thread nuts. And so I tried to find some other bolts. And then I got them home and they didn't work. And so I just ordered on Amazon.com a replacement uh, uh, nut. And it should be here tomorrow. I'm going to go eat some dinner, take some deep cleansing breaths, and I'll show you what we got tomorrow when that nut comes. All right.
Well guys, my bolt came in the mail. I got the bike fully assembled, tuned up the brakes and the gear shifter, and uh, I'm ready to do the big reveal. Man, those black rims and white tires really pop. The brakes look sharp. The white grips on there and the black handlebars. Got gloss black finish on everything. Nice, wide, comfortable seat. You got the shock absorbers, the only original chrome. I couldn't find a replacement for that and couldn't paint it. So it's one of the only things that stayed chrome. Got these fold-in pedals and I replaced uh, all the quick release uh, bolts with these a little bit more fancy ones work a little bit better got one up there too the gear shift and the rear derailleur one of the few things I could not replace even if I wanted to this is uh, only a three geared bike they just don't make many three geared bikes anymore and the ones they do aren't mini sized very often so very hard to find those parts look at that that looks pretty darn sharp all right let's go check it out let's go test this thing out it's been several years since i've rode this thing and i've put on about 50 pounds since then so hopefully this thing won't won't just break <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I weigh 250 pounds and I'm six foot four. Needless to say, I'm a little bit big for this bicycle, but still, there we go. It works. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more great videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching. Fat man on a little bike, fat man on a little bike.